Hello everyone! Welcome to part 1 of You are scaring me challenge. Yes, there's going to be exactly what you think it there's going to be. And obviously we are going to be dealing with some of the troubles that are following our ships for the few last challenges. So let's get into it, shall we? As always, special thanks to my lovely patrons and all of you who subscribe and watch these videos. You're keeping this channel alive and going. Thank you very much and I hope you will enjoy. Another challenge. Already. It feels like we aren't doing anything else this month. I'm not complaining. Yeah, because you haven't been in one for ages. How would you know? You aren't in every single one. That's true. Maybe there are some going on we don't know about. So what's this one about? Glad you ask. Your task will be to tell your partner they are scaring you. Precise interpretation is up to you. That's scarily accurate for our situation. Same. Yeah, for me too. That's why I came up with it. What do you mean by interpretation? It means that it's up to you if you want to act scared in front of your partner, like physically, or if scaring equals worrying. Ah, got it. That's good. Nabu would probably freak out if it was just physical reaction. That guy can freak out? You'd be surprised. I think Ken will freak out in either case. He gets super protective when he just sees something scares me. I don't know what he will do when the scary one will be him. That's weirdly sweet, actually. Why weirdly? It's sweet, period. I'll give anything to see Omi that protective. You should look better then. Huh? Alright, so I'm guessing everyone is in since no one protests. Seems like it. Great. Go ahead then. May this help some of you figure some things out. That would be nice. Despite usually enjoying Kentaro's protective nature, Shigeru really didn't want to do this. It felt wrong to activate his husband's protective mode artificially, and on top of that pretty much blame him for it too, which made things even worse since Kentaro would believe him even though it was impossible. There was a lot of things that scared Chigeru, but Kentaro was not one of them, ever. He's going to freak out, I can already see it. Why do I always get roped into this? Chige. He barely held back the squeal as he spun around, his heart beating wildly. Correction, Kentaro did scare him sometimes, though this wasn't entirely his fault. Kentaro took a step back, visibly taken aback by his reaction. Sorry, I thought you heard me. Nope, not at all. He let out a shaky chuckle, suddenly unable to stop himself from clutching his wrist in an attempt to saddle. It was an instinctive response, and unfortunately didn't escape Kentaro's gaze if Shigeru could judge by his suddenly widened eyes. Did I spook you that bad? I didn't even sneak up on you. Sensing an opportunity, Shigeru lowered his eyes sending a quick prayer to the gods to save him from unintentionally taking things too far. Sorry, I... I guess you are scaring me sometimes. Kentaro's face fell, panic clearly visible in his eyes as he knelt down in front of Shigeru, the hesitation in his movement when he went to hold his hand, breaking Shigeru's heart. Why didn't you say something sooner? What did I do? I won't do it again, I swear. 
You know I would never do anything to you, right? Shigeru hated this with his whole being. As if he wasn't feeling guilty enough before, now that his beloved, who he knew would never lay a finger on him, knelt in front of him worried out of his mind, he couldn't but wonder whether he was actually a horrible human being. Unable to keep going, he threw himself around Kentaro's neck, squeezing as tight as he could without hurting him. I know, I'm so sorry. His personal safe haven closed around him as Kentaro returned the hug, nuzzling into the crook of his neck. Don't be, it's not your fault. I didn't mean to hurt you, even unintentionally. I know, that's not the issue. I... It was a challenge, to say you are scaring me. I mean, you did spook me, but that's nothing horrible. I know it's you and that you would never do anything to me. I just... Sorry. He was prepared to get a stern talking to about challenges. But instead, Kentaro just humped into his neck and pulled him closer. Well, if it's nothing more serious... You aren't upset? No. It's good to have a reminder to be careful sometimes. He then groaned quietly and pulled away, much to Shigeru's disappointment. But next time maybe tell me not to kneel so fast. Hurts? A bit. He smirked then, an expression Shigeru so much more glad. So, since it was because of a challenge, why do you say you repay me by using your new physio knowledge to help me out? Shigeru rolled his eyes but couldn't keep the smile off of his face. After all, if all it took for Kentaro to forgive him was stretching and massage, he would go far and beyond. The challenge was going to be slightly more difficult for him than for others, but Sami was still determined to go through with it. Not that Shirebu ever scared him. Perhaps only with the sheer willpower to stubbornly see everything he started to the end no matter what. But there's been something about his boyfriend's recent behavior that worried him. Sure, it wasn't unusual for Shirabu to dive deep into studying some new medical discovery or reading his patient's cards, but this was... different. He couldn't put his finger on it, but it was. Even now, almost an hour after coming home, Shirabu sat slumped by the table, forehead in his palms, staring at a single paper in front of him. Definitely not a normal situation. What am I supposed to do at this point? He's not going to rest until he's done thinking, that's obvious. He sighed, knowing well what he should do, which, however, would make him thread a very thin line. Why do I have a feeling this is going to turn really ugly if I'm not careful? But no matter the danger for his heart, he couldn't leave it just like that. Not when his boyfriend needed to rest. He grabbed a pen and a few papers, quickly scribbling a message on one of them before he headed over to the table. Shirabu flinched when the paper landed in front of him, hiding whatever he was reading so fast he almost tore it. What? Sammy sighed softly, already hearing the edge in Shirabu's voice, and tapped on the paper again. You should take a rest. You had a busy day. Tension gathered around Shirabu's jaw, warning Sammy he should choose his words carefully. 
Even though Shirabu kept his word and tried his best to not snap every time he was anxious or tired, sometimes things just weren't ideal. I'll rest. Soon. But not soon enough, dear. I know you. Shirabu scoffed, which was much milder a reaction than Sammy expected, and turned away. Do you now? Then how about you leave me be? You know I can't. I can't let you destroy yourself again right before my eyes. I'm not destroying myself. I just need to think. About? Not your business. Just leave it be, okay? Leave me be. With a deep sigh, Sammy swallowed the bad feeling bubbling up his throat and pushed the paper back in front of Shirabu's eyes. Kenji, you are scaring me. What's wrong? I want to help you, but I don't know how. Shirabu froze, tightening his hands into fists, but Sammy knew him too well to know it wasn't a sign of anger. Rather that he was trying to stay composed with all his might. His thoughts got confirmed a second later, when the very anxious doctor hugged him and buried his face into his stomach. Sorry. Sorry, I... I'm sorry. Cursing inwardly his inability to say a single word, Sammy hugged him back gently patting his hair to try to calm him down. I can't tell you. I'd love to, but I can't. Not when we... and you're still... Confused, perhaps even more, Sammy shook his head and continued to caress Shirabu's back in hopes he would learn more. But Shirabu stayed silent, except for the shaky breaths he took. And so Sammy let him be, focused solely on soothing the invisible pain his beloved suffered with. He would learn what Shirabu meant eventually, for sure. Yaku's relief that came after they talked out his transfer and the whole tension surrounding their relationship because of his inability to find the right words didn't last for long, it seemed. He wanted to believe things were getting better, desperately so. He hated silent household, hated not being able to hug his fiance whenever he wanted, hated the fact he made life not trust him. The last part obviously stung the most. He could deal with silence and lack of affection when it came to it, but knowing his own partner, a person he loved more than anything in the world, had to think about whether something he said was true or not, hurt. Everything was too uncertain, from love's still present, albeit currently silent stalker, to their relationship. And now, love suddenly seemed like he lost interest in anything regarding the two of them. Hence why Yaku agreed to the challenge. Lesson learned the hard way, we can't let things go unsaid between us. Yet he still felt his very core trembling as he made his way into their living room where Love had been doing something ever since he came home two hours ago. Love? Hmm? Is everything alright? Lev finally raised his head to look at him, his expression strange enough to almost stop Yaku in asking further. You've been really quiet these days. Are you working on something? A heavy sigh escaped Lev's mouth. Not really. Just thinking. Is it still about my transfer? He dreaded asking that, knowing he was leaving while things between them weren't back to good yet. 
On top of that, he was leaving left to face the stalker alone, with just his bodyguards to keep him safe. Not that he could be of much help against the faceless threat, but still. Lev seemed to pause at his question before he clenched his jaw, looking away. Partially. The floor swayed under Yaku's feet. Are you still upset? Please talk to me. Whatever the problem, we can deal with it. I'm sure of it. We just have to talk. Please, this... You are scaring me. The blitz change in Lev's face froze him in place, only for him to fall forward when Lev pulled him to his chest. I'm sorry, Mori. I'm not upset, I promise. I wish you all the best in your career, and if we have to be apart for now for it to go forward, then so be it. Then what is it? Why are you suddenly so distant again? For the longest while, Lev stayed silent until he pulled away with a sigh, ending Yaku a piece of paper he hadn't noticed before. It's because of this. Yaku's blood ran cold when, after reading just the first few sentences, he realized he was looking at yet another letter from the unknown person following Lev everywhere. One of the guys found it by the door. Wait, door? Does that mean... Yeah, somehow got around the first line of defense without being noticed. Chills ran down Yaku's spine. The letter itself was bad news, but the place where it was found, so close to them while no one noticed a stranger's presence, I thought that guy got finally bored and would leave us alone, but now... He looked down, meeting Yaku's eyes, the worry in his own stunning Yaku for a moment. I'm sad we'll be apart again, but with this on the table, I'm glad you'll be far from here. You'll be safe there. But what about you? What if... He didn't get further, silenced by a soft kiss landing on his lips. I'll be fine as long as I know you are away from danger. Nakamura-san said the possibility of that guy going after me first is low, so I'll be fine. I wish I had your optimism. Still, he relaxed in Tulev's arms. Somewhat happy the tension wasn't a beginning of something bad again. Well, at least not within their relationship. Promise me you'll be careful here. Same goes for you. Who knows what that guy is capable of. That Yaku didn't want to even think about. At first, Atsumo agreed to the challenge just for the fun of it and to get a reaction out of his boyfriend. But now, as he watched Sakusa almost beaming, he started to reconsider his intention. For most people, seeing their partners in such high spirits would be a blessing. However, for Atsumo, the sight of Sakusa almost bouncing around the room and smiling so widely was somewhat unnerving. He didn't know why. He laughed when Sakusa smiled. It was the most beautiful his already handsome partner got. And yet... Uh... Omi? Is everything okay? Sakusa actually grinned at him before he continued in rearranging the tiny figures on the shelf. Yeah, everything is fine. Why wouldn't it be? I don't know. Maybe because I've never seen you so springy before. Springy? You know what I mean. 
He motioned vaguely at Sakusa when the man raised his eyebrows at him. This! You look like a kid whose parents just told them they'll go to an amusement park. Sakusa looked at him as if he just fell from the sky and then shrugged. Shrugged. Atsumo just gasped in bewilderment, wondering whether Oikawa's yapping about aliens was actually true and someone swapped his boyfriend's brain at night. If that was the case, he wanted a refund. Now you are really scaring me, Omi. What happened? Nothing. I'm just in a good mood today. Is that so strange? With you? Yes. He hesitated for a beat before hugging Sakusa from behind, stopping him in his tracks. I know it sounds weird, but seeing you this ecstatic all of a sudden is a bit out of nowhere. Don't get me wrong, I'm glad you are in good mood and I love to see you smile, but still. Sakusa watched him for a moment and then ruffled his hair with a soft chuckle. Is it really that scary for you? Nodding, Atsumo snuggled closer to Sakusa's back, hiding his face in his shoulder. He was being silly, he knew that. He should just leave his boyfriend and enjoy the day if nothing else, instead of question him about it. But he couldn't otherwise. If anything, he wanted to share that happiness. But for that, he needed to know where it came from. Well, that wasn't entirely true, but he wanted to know. As if reading his thoughts, Sakusa shook his head in a loving exasperation and leaned a bit more into Atsumu, squeezing his hand lightly. I just got some good news today, which means an even better day is coming up, that's all. Oh? What is it? Wouldn't you like to know, huh? Well, yeah, that's why I asked. Sakusa let out a short laugh, after which a kiss landed on the back of Atsumu's hand. You'll see soon, I promise. It's a secret for now. Hearing about secret, Atsumu wanted to pry further. But knowing Sakusa, he wouldn't get anything out of him no matter what he did. And so he just relaxed enjoying the feeling of holding his beloved in his arms. He would learn the truth eventually. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. So obviously I left the more dramatic storylines for the second part because I need someone to watch the second part. But I don't want to say this one was more lighthearted, but yes, it was. Compared to the ones that are coming up, in part two, this was lighthearted. So make a picture for yourself. Also, as you could see, we are going back to the Yakulev Stalker storyline, because I've been neglecting it for far too long. And I'm actually really excited about getting back to it, because it's going to be fun. If you have any requests or ideas, the request form is linked in the video description. See you next time!